Thank you very much for being here and thank you to Professor Andrea Tortoreto and Professor Alberto Voltolini for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here and share, to share with you my research about Husserl perception. I begin now with my presentation uh, and, uh, and uh, to say uh, something about the title of, uh, of perception between, percep between impression and imagination. I chose this title uh, because um, I wanted to explain the difference uh, in perception between impression and imagination. I'd like to distinguish in perception uh, three uh, different moments. In different moments, please. Um, we have uh, three moments, three steps, I would say, in Husserl perception. Mm, that is uh, one first uh, moment, one first step is presentation, in which we have an activity of think and uh, an activity of the think uh, in perception. We have no uh, own perception here in this step, but we have um, an impression. This is very important in phenomenology. Why? Because uh, we can say that in this moment we have an activity of the thing and we have a passivity of consciousness. In the second step, as we will see, we have an activity of the, con the, the consciousness and uh, here we have we have the constitution of the temporal object into consciousness and the things becomes uh, an object an object real in german in the third moment or third, third step we have um, Another kind of uh, perception that is not properly perception. We have um, perception, but uh, an imagine, imagine consciousness of the thing. So we have not the direct perception or own perception because we have the thing not uh, like half dish or um, in the flesh. So we have um, the thing uh, uh, imaginated, and uh, we can say the thing uh, um, only not yet there, not yet here, not yet uh, given us immediately. We have the thing uh, not in proper sense in person. This is the third moment. I call it presentation. I um, use this term um, from uh, Derrida. Uh, Derrida wanted to distinguish, to highlight the difference between uh, presentification and presentation in the future. When we have uh, uh, the thing not in properly sense, we have the thing not yet, uh, not yet here, not yet here. And in this way, we have a presentation and not a presentification. But we will see all here now in a few minutes. I go on. I begin with part one. Part one, introduction to perception. What phenomenology is. Excuse me, a moment, please. I have to put away. Okay. What phenomenology is? Moment. Phenomenology is this. Yes. Phenomenology is this science of phenomena. What appears is a phenomenon. Its appearance is the opportunity of an apprehension of passing for the consciousness. Bewusstsein. I, put here the difference between consciousness and conscience. Naturally, is the difference um, uh, between the Bewusstsein and uh, Gewissen, the same difference in German. 
In fact, apprehension means that the thing offers itself. It gives itself to the consciousness or it presents itself to it. Presentation. This is a presentation. The moment first step. So, as I said, the first step, a presentation of the thing. But presentation, Darstellung, is very different from representation, Vorstellung. We can see here the difference between Kantian and Husserlian philosophy, because Darstellung for Husserl is a presentation of the thing self. It's not a representation that presentation is something that probably we can um, we can intend as uh, something of. Uh, cognitive or mental. But here in this case, we have to, to, to make a difference and we have to use with Husserl always the term representation, presentation and not representation. Darstellung and not Vorstellung. Presentation comes from the thing itself. Representation, it is the symbolic representation, comes from the subject. Ideas one. This is the different be difference between Kantian philosophy of representation and Husserl phenomenology of presentation. The phenomenological approach. Classical phenomenology is born with Husserl in 1991, Logische Untersuchungen. From the beginning, against every form of idealism, phenomenology wants to go back to things. Another difference with Kant to how they present, present themselves to consciousness in their essence, in invariable contents that they carry with them. Consciousness is opening intentionality. It is the modality of registering the impressions that come from things and that affect affection, the, the consciousness. Those impressions become then in consciousness lived experiences or early business, that is a flow of lived experiences. Ideas one, ideas one. Back to think, it's a very important motto of phenomenology and logische Untersuchungen, the famous back to things. The starting point of Husserl philosophy of perception is the direct study of things. He says, we want to let things talk. Let's be instructed by them. Wahrnehmung und Aufmerksamkeit. How can things teach? And if they can cut to it, what will they touch us? Back to things. We are in the part two, second part. The things presentation. As I said, first step of uh, phenomenology of perception things presentation, the activity of the thing, pre-perception, or in German, for Wahrnehmung. The activity of things. Husserl says in analysis of passive synthesis, an object catches my attention. It forces me to turn around and look at it. Analysis of passive synthesis. Firstly, the consciousness, Bewusstsein, is passive. It receives content from things. This is very important. It receives content from things. The thing light, for example, catches my attention. In this moment, the consciousness is impressionate, affection by the light in question, but 
This is an involuntary act, or better, an involuntary act without will, in which the consciousness has no intention. It is only impressioned by the thing. The thing is, on the contrary, acted. The thing wants to be seen. I can I can read now a little piece of Husserl's book, Analysis, Analysis and Sua Passive and Synthesis. I have this here to find it. Okay, it's here. In every moment of perceiving, the perceived is what it is in its mode of appearance as a system of referential implications with an appearance core upon which appearances have their hold. And it calls out to us, as it were, in this referential implication. <laughs> Here uh, is speaking uh, thing says, and the, the thing says, there is still more to see here. Tell me so you can see all my sides. Let your case run through me. Go closer to me. Open me up. Divide me up. Keep on looking me over again and again, turning me to see all sides. You will get to know me like this. All that I am, I all my face qualities, all my insensible qualities, and so on. The thing, the things are speaking, and in, uh, in this, in this piece of uh, analysis concerning passive synthesis, the different moment of the things activity. We have an activity of thing. And we have three moments, three steps in this uh, activity of the team. Stimulus, impression, and affection. Stimulus, impression, and affection. Passivity of consciousness implies an activity of things. When I look at the table, for example, I can only grasp one aspect of that object. But in this grasping, a fasum, it is as if the thing itself were suggesting me to delve into it. It urges me to make rotation from all sides, to run across it from all sides. Analysis and super synthesis. So then I react to the solicitation. In this series of passages, we can distinguish three moments of the thing's activity, a stimulus, an impression, and an affection. Stimulus, attraction and traction. The stimulus comes from things. We can say a solicitation exerted by the thing on the ego. For example, a beam of light, sound of a melody, the roughness of a wooden surface, a spicy flavor. All, all those events can produce a stimulus, a solicitation. Things have the potential to produce stimulatory events. They can, they, they can act, act actively in the consciousness causing a specific activity, which consists in producing a solicitation. The first moment of stimulus, therefore, must be understood as an attraction an attractive force of the object towards consciousness, a search for the attention of an ego. But this stimulus must also be understood in a second and consequent moment as a push, traction, took to deepen and to follow references that come from the thing, analysis of a synthesis. Now, we have impression and impressed consciousness. The impression consists in striking the sensory organs with the qualities characterizing the team. It is precisely the pressure with which the think hood, the English guide, exert on the sensory organs. In other words, what's what the stimulus has exerted on the consciousness is now transformed into an imprint 
painting of the things characteristics on the consciousness. The impressed consciousness, the one which contains these characteristics, represents a first step for a definitive modification of the consciousness itself, affection. Here too, two fundamental movements must be distinguished. First, the original impression. Secondly, the continuous of impressions which, as we will see, are retained in the impressed consciousness going to generate an affection, Zeit, Bewusstsein. Third point, affection. Consequently, takes, takes place the affection, that is a modification in the sensory organs. Here I quote, I quote you, because Husserl um, speaks about modification in the sense of uh, Jung philosophy, modification in sensory organs. And he said, this is you, for from you. This change modification consists in forcing the affected or sensory organs, not ecological modified, to make consciousness take a position. Affection, first of all, presupposes a kind of result that we could only find in the sphere of impressions, analysis to, to a passive synthesis. What stand out, stands out now? What stands out now are the, what what stand out now are the structures that impress the consciousness and that begin to take form as determined in the construct between living thing, physical phenomena, and the lived thing, experienced phenomena, that will be between the image of physical thing and the image of the lived, lived thing, fantasy, built bewusstsein. Affection, therefore, has two essential tasks. To bring the original material of the thing, the thing affects, affects my senses, and to allow the production of an image of the thing. That is, to perceive, just right to perception. And we have here another step, third point, the presentification, real uh, Presentification and uh, we can say we can say also mm, knowledge of the thing. So we have presentification of the thing in itself. We concern we can say we have into consciousness uh, the transcendence of thing, but we have also um, a lived experience of the thing. So we have a real so. Uh, as I, I will say to you in a few minutes, the presentification in German, Fair gegen Vertigung. Fair gegen Vertigung. Then we have a representification, wieder Fair gegen Vertigung, but not, not now. Grasping a fassung the essence. The action of the thing has caused in the consciousness, in the consciousness, an active consideration and attention, the awareness. We are here in a in very important moment. Early, high, we we are we were in a, a passive consciousness. We had a passive consciousness. Here we have. We have an active consciousness in which consciousness uh, has uh, an active consideration of the thing and uh, it uh, has an attention to it. This is the awareness uh, or Weckung in German in which uh, the consciousness is active and that uh, um, it can see, it can feel, it can perceive in proper sense the thing self. Consciousness is awakened and now is engaged in the perspective act. 
observing the table that has captured the attention of the ego. The ego now, we are in the uh, proximity of the ego. An ego is in the same thing that uh, atten attention of consciousness. Consciousness in this phase can be said uh, an ego that uh, uh, perceive uh, uh, with attention, with uh, awareness, with uh, a consideration. Um, observing the table that has captured the attention of the ego now, consciousness is dealing with something that, despite the different perspectives in which some aspects are always hidden, maintain, maintains an identical unity. The external perception, therefore, shows this weakness. I perceive it in, in its identity, but I always and constantly perceive it through adumbraments, overshadowing. I have one side vision of the thing, limited and never complete ball. This is very important. Limited and never complete ball. I have a one side vision of the thing. Ideas one. Perceiving a thing during its presentation Therefore, means intuiting an invariable essence of the thing, although some aspects of it necessarily escape the apprehension of the thing. The time diagram. We have here an important uh, explication of uh, temporal consciousness in Husserl time diagram. We have a um, line uh, of uh, um, A and E, um, the, line, the above, line above, and we have a point uh, P. This point is uh, the moment uh, of a now. We have many, many nows in uh, this perception E E, A, E, a series of now points, and this is uh, also the difference between Husserl and Brentano um, temporal uh, philosophy. Brentano uh, thinks that we have a perception uh, of the thing in temporal perception of now. I perceive now a moment and now a moment now another moment and so on. For Husserl, we have another thing. We have a constitution into consciousness and which uh, those nows remains are retained in consciousness. So we have retention or he said a comet tail that gradually associates itself with perception that is uh, the line E a first, E A first. In this moment, we have a continuum phase, point now with past horizon. In this moment, we can say we have uh, the object uh, like a mm, togetherness or a sameness or a whole into consciousness, uh, not more a now that passed, uh, that lasts, and that it. Uh, there's no more here. We have all together in consciousness. So we have a stimulus, a sensation of sound, for example, and we have an apprehensive content. Then we have an impression. So, um, as I said, an impression sounds grasping currently, then an affection, apprehension of sound. Then um, then we have still a uh, retention, current duration, current duration, comet tail of retention, Zeit Bewusstsein, and retention, the series, phase, continuum of nows held in consciousness or prima, primary memory, comet tail that gradually associates itself with perception. Duration past, no more and now but present in consciousness. So we have present in consciousness all the nows, all the series of now points. 
And this is the very important difference between uh, temporal consciousness in Brentano and Husserl. Sensation and properties of things. The act of apprehension offered us a new perspective of the object. Now we have the object that lasts inside the consciousness. So I, I think to a melody or an accord, two accord uh, of a piano, we have not only the moment of a single note, but we have all together in memory, we can say in retention, we retain into consciousness all the notes, all the accords, all uh, the melody without interruption. Object that lasts is this one in Husserl. This is object retains the properties of the thing presented, intentional object, adding a new element, special sensation. When I look at the same cube, my special sensations are different from the properties of the cube. I grasp the red data color that lasts as something immanent, immanent data, while observing this color in the colored side of the cube, it can be adumbrated. This is a very important problem in uh, Husserl phenomenology. We cannot see directly the object in all its sides. We can see only a side, only a, a part of it. We have to imagine the other parts. So we have a part that when we uh, make a movement around the thing, we can grasp, uh, we can grasp other, other things, other sides of it, but we cannot maintain the thing uh, in the same perception. We have perception one, perception two, uh, perception three, and so on. And in these numbers of perception, number of perceptions, we have the world. We have the object that lasts. But we have also adumbration. We have also a um, moment that we cannot directly see. And this is a very important problem for knowledge. That Husserl uh, can be solved uh, with the transcendental philosophy, philosophy of an ego, and uh, and with uh, with Leibniz and with a belief in the philosophy of the ego, a sort of idealism, we can say, in which uh, we have no adumbrements into consciousness because we can have all together in consciousness, not. Uh, not uh, as like in uh, the reality in which we find adumbrements. So the way of combining elements, complexion, complexion of a thing offered by sensation is not the same way of co combining elements in the thing presented. Its properties are other than sensation. By name of of Merzamkeit. The apprehension of the properties of the things so or sensations lead to a consciousness of identity, consciousness of identity. Another important thing, we have an activity of consciousness that make, makes all, uh, all these parts, all these sides, uh, like a world, like a, a sameness, and that is an action uh, identity dying that makes an identity. So it can be said, despite the different sensation, the identity of the object remains the same. Identity and reality of the thing, real and real. With the experience of an object that lasts and with a different special sensation, the apprehension of the thing presented in the flesh, like haftig, allows us 
to grasp the identity of the thing, intentional content, real in German, to perceive the thing in its actual reality, given in an actual way, real, it's only the consciousness of the object, not the object in general, Wahrnehmung und Aufmerksamkeit. In the lived experience, erlebnis of consciousness, that is in the continuous kinesthesia around the object, every experience of the absurd thing is kept within the consciousness by a retention act. Retention, like the diagram of time, time di diagram. In fact, in its presentation, in addition to, given, to the givenness of the thing, its presentation, its activity, other elements of the thing are co-grasped. They are presently given as adumbrated or simply not still given, empty indicated that refers to something else that is not given, not yet given. Analysis to passive synthesis in translation in English official translation official translation. <laughs> the perceptive act, in addition to direct affection, also could grasp these contents of the intentional object. From presentation, presentation of the thing self to presentification. Now the consciousness is active. The consciousness of identity. So the act of apprehension does join. We therefore come to the perception of a thing of a real table that has affected coach by my my attention, affected my attention, affection. When the table rotates in front of our eyes, we have the consciousness of the sameness of the table, sameness of the table. The consciousness of identity identifies the thing in this way and not the lived experience and labels of the thing. It is the table that is identical, not perception of the table. The table is identical, not the perception of the table, one name and of mesakite. Perceiving something in the flesh, real, therefore means presentifying it, being aware of it. In the perspective act, this thing is learned as an object that remains and remains identical within the consciousness, despite the different spatial sensation and the different adumbrements over shade wings. The presentifying act is the act of a consciousness of identity that recognizes the identity of the table, real, in different perception and recognizes it as identical in consciousness, real. The fusion, Verschmelzung, very important in the philosophy of Kadame. This shows that in the perceptive process of the same object, by changing perceptions, what remains identical in this complexity of act is the table. Mix always examples with table. I don't know why. That is a fusion take place by name and of Merzamkeit. Despite the different sensitive sensation caused by the table object, the identity presentifying is maintained in consciousness. Those sensation, in fact, those sensation. In fact, always refer to the same object, a constant, a constant X. They always reflect the table from different perspectives or in different kinesthetic movements, table movements. For example, from this point of view, I do not see the tools 
the drawers or of the table, but from this other I see a decoration and from yet another I notice the different ribs of the wood and so on. Apprehensive content and apprehensive sense, zin. When perception all have different apprehensive contents, but a single focus, they refer to a single object, that is, they maintain the same object reference and merge into a single object content, the perceptual act apprehends a single sense, zin. There is apprehension of, of that re reference when all perception have their elements presenting themselves in the same sense, in the sense of the same object reference. Wahrnehmung und Aufmerksamkeit. Apprehension is therefore possible on the basis of the fusion that groups the different perception, different contents of the same thing in a single word as perception of the same sense which refer to the same apprehensive content. For example, I have different apprehensive contents of an apple. I see its color. I feel it to the touch. I can feel its test. All these perceived contents of the qualities of the thing are perception of its properties, also my sensory perception. They are content with, contents with different apprehensions which, however, head towards a single direct direction, towards the single apple object. So we have different contents, but only a sense, only a sin. We can say only a dire direction, a, only an object, object a, apple in this case, but different apprehensive contents, direct and indirect perception, sensation and attention. We speak now about uh, direct and uh, not direct perception, two, kind of, two kinds of uh, uh, perception, proper and improper, uh, so uh, as we will see. Sensations arise on the basis of external perception and are experiences, experiences of the thing or even direct perception. These, in fact, directly grasp the properties of the thing in its presentation. The sensations are direct experiences that are formed on the basis of the encounter with the thing sensation or direct experience that are formed on the basis of the encounter with thing. This is intentionality in Husserl, very important, because uh, we have a connection between thing and consciousness. Very important con connection. Without this connection, we have no knowledge, we have no uh, consciousness, we have no perception in Husserlian, uh, to, to, in Husserlian philosophy. When we direct our attention to such sensation, we have second kind of perceptions in direct perception. Thus, the perceptions of direct perception of those experiences derived from sensation and generated by the immediate intuition shower of the thing or lived experiences, Erlebnisse. Pay attention to it. it means making evident the process that from the direct perception grasping the real arrives at the actual perception, real. It is from the sensation of the thing to the lived experience of the thing, a liveness. Own and not own perception. And this way, one thing is the thing in the flesh, real, and another one is the consciousness of the thing, real that is the intentional relation. 
and think is the direct perception that grasps the thing in presenting itself. Another thing is the consciousness of the thing internally constituted as lived experience to sensation, identity consciousness and productive imagination. Real. This is real. The difference between real and real. Hence, the further, further distinction between all perception, the side of the cube that I now see it directly, and not all perception that arises as a production of associative contents of all perception, the hidden side of the cube that I imagine in association with what I'm looking at now, even though I cannot see that side. The object given in reality, Birklichkeit, for example, a cube, is therefore the result of one's own perception, the sight I directly see, and at the same time, an imagined cube, the result of co apprehended determination of the parts which I do not see. Pure symbolic and pure perception. We will therefore have three types of perception, pure or adequate perception, for example, the purely presented parts of an apple or the purely intuitive ones, the part that I see, the peel, and those that I intuitively grasp, the sides that continue after or precede it. Husserl lights, the only perceiving that is primordial impressional and not simply retention consciousness of the past phases of the perceptual object is a conscious having, conscious having of what is being adumbrated originally there. Two, symbolic or almost quasi adequate perception. For example, the parts that do not present themselves now and that are now not properly intuited. The pulp of the apple and its flavor, for example, but symbolically presented because they belong to the thing self, or intuited, we can say co-intuited, not directly intuited. We have mm, a sensation that something uh, is not here but uh, is it a part the hidden part of this uh, object symbolically presented because they belong to the thing even if i cannot see directly this part then we have another kind of perception that i, I call it in pure perception Husserl uh, speaks uh, about inadequate perception. For example, to perceive something in an indistinct way, its apprehensive character is uncertain or inadequate. For example, I see Husserl is an example. <laughs> I see a human being in the fog, but in reality, it is a wax statue. I have apprehended the content that is not adequate to the Leibhaftig thing. So I think that is a, a, a man, a human being, I think is a man, but is in the reality a wax statue. It's not uh, the Leibhaftig or, uh, or we can say uh, in the flesh thing. It's not thinking in the flesh. We have just arrived at the end of my presentation. We are in the part uh, on part three, four, fourth part, presentation. The particular word, a uh, term that I use, uh, um, like uh, Derrida, because I think uh, it's very important to make a difference between presentification, presentifying act, presenti presentification, and presentification uh, of a uh, thing in the flesh, and presentation by image. Imagination and image consciousness 
uh, probably are completely different from from um, the presentification in real in reality in Wirklichkeit. The image consciousness who built the worst sign. With this last moment of perception, we come to distinguish a new way of consciousness. In fact, when the presentation of a thing offers an impure or inadequate perception, the absent or missing elements are added or fantasized precisely through an image consciousness built bewusstsein image picture consciousness fantasy built bewusstsein erinnerung in summary we have an identity consciousness when we grasp a thing and through a fusion all its elements converge in a presentification of the thing in the proper sense in its identity. Then we have an image consciousness when we depict, darstellen a thing through a modification of perceptions we had before, and we arrive at, is, at its presentification with a fantastical aggregation of its elements, sight, bewusstsein. please okay the wax statue in the fog let us now return to the example of the wax statue the salient example of the wax statue we admit that we cannot access whether this shape or can correspond to a man in the direct perception of this silhouette, I can imagine having seen a man coming towards me. I have a feeling of its approaching and moving in one direction. I have lived experience of his moving towards me. However, my depiction, Darstellung, does not match to reality. It is empty. If I get close, I have an opportunity to verify the difference. But if I can't get close, the experience remains that of a man who approached me in the fog. This experience is therefore a fantasized presentification. My feeling about it produces an empty presentification or an empty intuition a presentification not original but by image imagination as an improper association <clears throat> image consciousness is therefore the possibility of presenting an object through elements that the fantasy associates in a proper way with a thing perceived confusedly. These elements can also be memories or associations with background images. Background images. The example of a room in which I saw a table, but now that I remember it, I imagine that in the background there was a, perhaps a painting that I had not noticed. Representation, representation or presentification by image, sight, bewusstsein. But it is also the possibility of creating, of inventing on the basis of memories, a new element that has not presented itself directly in that specific form. For example, imagining a new melody or a new landscape. Here too, we will have an improper association and we will create a presentation, a non-original presentation, presentification, that is a presentative anticipation or prefiguring analysis or passive synthesis, prefiguring. 
we will thus distinguish two types of imagination in the imaginative consciousness, direct and creative. Direct imagination or belief. Direct imagination is that act which produces apparitions of fantasy on the basis of an experience and elements directly experienced but connected and considered together, perceptive the courses in a representation or presentification by image. Even the imagination is therefore an act of presentifying fullness, fulfilling, but the content of this fullness is not given by sensory experience, rather it is given by imaginative experience. Here it is important uh, the action of uh, um, consciousness, uh, of imaginative consciousness in this moment, imaginative consciousness mm, uh, highlights the, mm, uh, the object, the thing, the imaginative thing using an image and not uh, something real, something real, we can say, something that is uh, in reality that can we, the, the, that we can uh, see in person or uh, in the flesh. So we have a um, memory or or memories or retention uh, in the past, but we have not the thing in front of us. We have another uh, another situation. We have um, a potential um, action of the consciousness that can that can be um, active and uh, um, imaginative act, action act and uh, the, consci the consciousness produces uh, uh, this image, this image, and this, this is an imaginative experience, not uh, an experience uh, um, direct to think in person. For example, another uh, Australian example, the hidden side of the house, the house that the imaginative consciousness fills, fills with a possible color or structure, but by verification I may realize that it was just an illusion. I thought that the house had a back garden and I imagined its structure, but in reality it was only based on my, on my belief, and this moment of belief is important in Husserl in passive synthesis and lesson of passive synthesis because in belief Husserl finds the opportunity of a creative action of the consciousness. We can imagine, we can produce, we can give givenness to imaginative imagination and imagination is very important because we can uh, we can know we can know we have knowledge uh, in through uh, this moment of imaginative consciousness we can imagine the hidden side of the thing the hidden side of the cube the hidden side of the house and we can imagine the parts that we cannot see directly and in this way, we can have we can have no adumbrations uh, into consciousness naturally, and we have um, a wall into consciousness that retains uh, all the different moments apprehended. Belief, 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 creative imagination, invention. This is another important uh, thing, you know theory of perception in Husserl, creative imagination in history too, as we will see 
few minutes completely dif different in the consciousness of image of an image that rises from co completely different is the consciousness of an image that arises from a non-direct perception as a result of a pure imagination without real object. This is called creative imagination. For example, I imagine that in the apartment there may be a piano, but it, I was never there. The creative imagination, therefore, is what produces possible presentification by creating it invention. For example, this occurs in the potential, protension, in which the presentation, protension in future, I mean, protension uh, not retains in the past, but protention future, in which the presentation of a thing is expected or a possible presentification is imagined. It's not yet here, it's not yet given. It's not uh, not not seen from 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 me. So we have a potential anticipation or protension tension too. For example, I decide to go on holiday and I made a place where I will go without having ever seen it before. In such cases, we have what Husserl calls an imaginative apprehension. Imaginative apprehension, very um, particular form of apprehension because we have no um, directly uh, experience of it, but is a very particular kind of experience. We have near a quasi experience, an almost quasi experience of it and that is called uh, from Husserl imaginative by Husserl imaginative apprehension Bildliche Auffassung which represents the no presentative it has no present itself or not present in its own way by represented by the imaginative consciousness as presentation by invention, fantasy, built, bewusst, and erinnerung. We, we are all, yeah, we are at the end. Imaginative translation, Verbildlichkeit in history. The imagination is fundamental in the history. To explain the difference between an experience and historical document, for example, I saw that statue when it was built, and imaginative presentification, the result of memory transmitted and not original experience. It. I'm told that the statue was built in honor of the fallen of the First World War. See, side by side. Imaginative translation consists in translating that historically transmitted content into a quasi-memory, into a quasi-presentation, as if through the memory of others, intentional mediation, that content would be now directly experienced by me. It's very important. Um, we have a, a, a piece, a manuscript of Husserl uh, in this direction, that uh, speaks about uh, the important uh, point of view um, about history. And the history is made uh, um, by this quasi-presentations. It's important uh, for us because we have in philosophy, for example, uh, the example of Plato, we have an experience of philosopher uh, of the past in this way for Husserl. Husserl gives the, the example of Plato through his writings and through philosophical criticism. This philosopher has come down to us. My, my imaginative translation makes his thought present to me. We can make present um, a philosopher of the past. We make it present by imaginative consciousness. 
he stood present to me, and Plato, says Husserl, becomes my presentification. Tradition and its work does allow me a fantastic impression, a fantastic composition of Plato, a Dichtung, decreases. Then I have it, I put it on a bibliography in Husserliana and uh, original uh, German and uh, in translation in English. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Nicoletta, for your presentation. And uh, so we, we can start the Q&A session. Uh, let's see if there are some questions from uh, people online or people in Turin. <laughs> okay, we have the, the first question from uh, uh, Regina. 